What is up everybody? We are right at sunset and we are going to be targeting some uh, nighttime fishing. Hopefully uh, the stripers or blues are around or weak fish or flounder or anything. Um, stay tuned. Here's the rig I'm going to be using tonight and hopefully we get some fish. Alright, so for today's rig, we're going to keep it very simple. Um, but before we get to it, I just want to show you two differences. So now, I've been using uh, these moon jigs vmc moon eye jigs uh i have found though that they make a pro series sleek jig i like these a lot better right now um and i'll tell you why so i fish both jigs i don't know if you could really tell but <clears throat> they're both half ounce now weigh the same but there's a substantial difference in hooks i'm gonna see if i could hold it up closer the one on my right is the sleek jig, the one on my left is the moon eye jig, and it's just a thicker hook. I mean, it is a little bit longer shank as well, but I found that they don't bend as easy, especially with a bigger fish. Um, you're not, you know, worried about the hook breaking or the hook bending, but uh, we're gonna try with the sleek jigs tonight. Um, tonight's gonna be simple. So we got our 20 pound monofilament, our half ounce, sleek jigs in uh the sardine color and also white and then we also have our 3-0 gamagatsu hooks for uh the teaser up up at the top all right so very simple we're gonna take the line we're gonna tie straight to the jig initially now um you know everybody has their own knots they like um i just do a basic <clears throat> uni knot on the bottom and we just feed it right through pull tight that's good and now I'm gonna just real fast take the <clears throat> pliers and trim the tag in there we go next I'm just doing this off of sight I'm not gonna be measuring it with a stick but uh, getting about a foot and a half up and what I'm gonna do once I get it a foot and a half up is tie a dropper loop now the key with the dropper loop you don't want to go too big um, where it's you know hanging too high you also don't want to go too small where you can't fit the hook so now we got our dropper loop. Next step, I'm gonna take one of these Gamagatsu 3.0 hooks. Um, might have to start moving up, but for the amount of you know small stripers around, I think the 3.0 has been perfect. Just try and pinch that so I can feed it through. Then we're gonna lock it in. Boom. And right there we got our <clears throat> little fluke rig with the half ounce jig in my left hand and then about a foot and a half up we got our uh, trailer or teaser hook and then I don't like tying a uh, swivel on you could do a barrel swivel up top but I find that with the barrel swivel you uh, have a weird presentation because if you're drift fishing the barrel swivel if it's right here weighs down the line so the presentation is a little bit different um, if you tie it just line to braid or you tie a little loop up top, it uh, it does make it a little bit easier to use and I think the presentation's a little bit better, but that's just my personal you know preference and opinion. But just put a little loop right there, a little overhand loop, and then take the pliers, we're gonna trim that tag in. And there you go, you got yourself a rig. Now, for bait, we're gonna be using Berkley Gulp. Um, I have other soft plastics that I might be uh, using, but for right now, you know, we're not gonna change what we're doing if it's working. Now, what I have been using typically are these uh, swimming mullet three and four inch ones. Um, there's not too much of a difference between the three and the four inch, other than I find that the four inch has a little bit of a bigger tail. The bodies are very similar. Um, the other thing I'm going to be trying are some jerk shads. Now, these are a little bit bigger, 5-inch. They have like a split tail instead of a, you know, curly tail. 
they're a little bit more durable um and i do find that if you're using bigger bait you do get bigger fish but we're going to vary the color depending on what the water clarity looks like so if the water looks dirty we'll probably go with the bright you know neon chartreuse color if it's clean we'll probably use white or sardine but stay tuned all right first drop of the night Let's see if anything's down there we're gonna just drop it to the bottom and just slowly just jig while we got a little bit of current oh felt like something grabbed it look oh something's grabbing it doesn't feel big fish on baby fish on not big by any means but hey we're not getting skunked tonight boys what the what man black sea bass i was not <clears throat> i was not thinking the first species of the night was going to be a black sea bass ain't that funny yeah i mean this is a juvenile black sea bass that's that's always a good sign now they gotta be 12 and a half inches uh to keep but this guy's well under that it's probably like nine ten inches but we're gonna let him back in the water all right hey no skunk tonight boys now, while I'm happy that I didn't get skunked, I have to say, uh, as the summer goes on, it does get a little bit annoying with the sea bass because they are notorious for ripping the tails off of, you know, the Berkeley Gulp swimming mullet. I mean, and then you end up flying through gulp like, like crazy, but good to see there's life out here. I'm waiting for the tide to actually start moving out right now um right now it's kind of slack so it's kind of not much going on right now so might start pitching it out and kind of working it back but we'll see so anybody that flounder fishes knows the pain that i'm talking about when when these little sea bass invade the bay i mean your rod tip literally is just like a machine gun hit i mean i'm getting crushed right now by little ones kind of just trying to slowly work it back All right, so <clears throat> good sign is I'm marking fish. Um, tide's just starting to move, so I'm hoping that means that might, you know, awaken a bite a little bit. Here's the hoping, right? Now all I'm doing, I know you probably can't see because it is pretty dark. All I'm doing is just jigging the bottom right now with uh, the fluke rig that I got tied up with gold. Right now. Yeah, so I'm just gonna, oh, sun, sun. Damn, that came out of nowhere. I was just about to say, so I'm about to try something a little bit different. Tighten the drag just a tad bit. Damn, I just tightened it and that thing just ran. My guess is either bluefish or striper. Only thing that makes me think blue was it came right to the surface initially. But the way it's running, I don't know, it might be a small striper. Well, we know if it, if it bites through, damn. This dude's peeling some line. I was gonna say if it bites through, we know it's a bluefish, but because I'm only fishing, I believe, 20 pound test on this. Man, didn't feel big at first. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's no world record fish, but definitely gotten some size since I set the hook. See, it's so dark. I'm gonna get the net just in case. Whatever it was, just got it at the surface, but peeled some drag. I'll tell you what, man, don't want to give up. Oh, this 
what I've been waiting for, man. Catching them little sea bass, waiting for these things. As soon as I get it close to the boat, it just keeps running. There we go. Oh yeah, striped bass, nice striper. Oh, and I missed the net, jeez Louise. There we go. Man. That's not a bad size bass. Let me put the light on. Look at that. Hooked right in the side jaw. That's not a bad striper, man. Uh, if I had to guess, it's probably heartbreak on a hook. It's probably like 26, 27 inches. Just for the heck of it, <clears throat> I just want to see how big this fish is, see how close my estimating skills are and then we're gonna get them back in the water let's line them up oh. flatten them out and 26 and a half 26 and a half inches ain't bad <clears throat> he's about an inch and a half short of the keeper but we're not gonna <clears throat> we're not keeping him even if he was a keeper off he goes even if he was a keeper we weren't gonna keep him now, if I'm being honest with you, I was starting to get a little discouraged just because um, typically it is slow when it's slack, but the tide, you know, is starting to move. And I was, you know, I'm marking fish. I mean, <clears throat> I keep showing you on here, but there's, there's fish around. And, you know, after you take so many casts and you hear fish splash and you start to wonder, what am I doing wrong? Um... What I did there was a little bit different. So what I was doing for a while was pitching it out behind the boat and working it against the tide um, off the bottom. Literally uh, made a cast and then hit record. And by the time I hit record, I already you know had a fish as soon as it hit surface. So um, that one was definitely higher up in the water column. So. I'm going to try working a little bit higher up in the water column, see if it makes a difference. But uh, so far, two bass, uh, striped bass and black sea bass. So uh, happy to, you know, feel something a little bit bigger than that sea bass. But All right, so we're going to get back out in the spot. Hopefully... Uh, Hopefully there's some other stripers hanging around. I know that ain't the only one here. But, you know, we've been fishing for stripers all year long. And, you know, I was fishing when it was 45 degrees. You know, the water's in the upper 30s, low 40s. Now we're getting them in, you know, high 60s, almost 70s. So, I'll tell you what, they are a fun fish to catch. Now, <clears throat> if you notice in all my videos that I do for stripers, you notice that I don't keep any of them. Um, they are good eating, but, you know, I, I understand that the stock is pretty... Oh, fish on! The stock's pretty low. I mean, they every year they regulate them, you know, based off of science and... I have a ton of respect for all these, you know, marine biologists. Do I always agree with them? Not really, but, um, you know, they went to college and, you know, studied specifically marine science. So, you know, they have more of a educated opinion on, you know, the fishery than I do, you know, a fisherman. But it feels like we got our second striper of the night on. We just got to the boat. I can't really see. It's not as big as that first one. Oh, yeah. I'm going to just swing this guy in. If I, if I can get him. Ah, there we go. That is a striper with a diaper. That one's probably 20 inches. Ooh. Sorry, 
buddy. Ah, son of a gun. Alright, get that back and we're gonna get him back in the water. Off he goes. Alright, two stripers, not bad. Now if you noticed with that last fish, man, I got him in the boat, unhooked him and threw him back. Um, I, I say it all the time, don't put your poor fish through like an Instagram shoot. You know, I'm not saying I've never taken pictures of fish because I do, but I try and do it as fast as possible. You know, take one and then let them go. Uh, I see these guys, man, where, you know, they're excited they caught a fish and, you know, they're keeping the fish out of water for like 20 minutes to, you know, get every single picture you possibly get with it. And by the time they throw it back in the water, it's, you know, floating away. So, you know, try and do your best to, you know, keep them in the water. You know, try and keep them out of the water a very minimal amount of time, unless you're keeping them. If you're keeping them, that's a different story. You know what I mean? If it's a legal size fish. Starting to see more life on the <clears throat> depth finder. But we'll see if they, the bite turns on. Whoa, whoa. Damn. This guy hit just as I was about to get it into the boat, get my line back in the boat. Now, one thing I will say, well, this guy's peeling some line, is you always got to assess what you're doing. So I was fishing for a little bit, I'd say 25, 30 minutes without a hit, other than, you know, a couple sea bass. And, you know, I, I could easily say all oh, the fish aren't here or, you know, it's not my night, but what I decided to do was <clears throat> fish a different water column. Now, I was fishing pretty deep, <clears throat> you know, close to the bottom and wasn't having much success. And now I'm fishing higher up in the water column and, you know, currently have my third striper of the night on. Not a, not a killer. It's probably in that cookie cutter cookie cutter size like 25 26 incher sometimes it's kind of hard to tell because these things really do fight man and, and it's like just when you think that they're done fighting when you get them to the boat they see the boat and then they get a different you know idea and they make another run oh yeah look at that that's a beautiful fish Try and keep him out of the water for a very short amount of time. Get him closer. Now he's still in the water. I'm trying to lip him. There we go. Now this guy, this guy swallowed it a little bit, but good news is, yep, it was just in the back of his mouth. Yeah, that ain't a bad sized fish, man. We're gonna let this guy go back. Off he goes. Now, I did learn it, you know, before having kids, you know, I'm, I'm fishing perfect tides, you know, for six, seven hours and, you know, have all the time in the world with kids oh, fish on you know you're kind of like handicapped with what you're doing i mean i don't want to be a bad father you know what i mean this is a small one man whatever it is yeah that's a rat boy Woo! look at that little guy that's an ambitious it's an ambitious striper right there that might be uh <clears throat> That might be maybe a 10 inch striper if that. Striper with a diaper, baby. Let's get him back in the water. Let him go, let him grow, right? So we're just gonna pitch it back out. Slowly work it. Oh, fish on. Let's go. Let's go, baby. This one's fighting real weird. Oh, there he goes. I was gonna say, he just 
peel and drag. Look at that real screamer. I was gonna say I don't I don't know if it knew it was hooked. I could feel the I could feel the weight. And then, you know, you set the hook and it just kind of felt like dead weight and then I honestly think the fish didn't know it was hooked. This actually feels like a nicer sized fish. I mean, I'm not even, at this point, I'm just holding the rod up and letting it run. You know, no point in trying to fight it while it's trying to run. Definitely a bigger fish. I mean, I know you can't tell because it's pretty dark out, but my rod's bent over half. I mean, this is definitely the biggest fish we've had all night. I mean, it's, it's easily ran 50 yards and still running. Now, Grant, I do have two hooks. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've gotten two stripers and it felt like one nice one. So I'm not sure what we have right now. Won't know for a little bit because it's kind of peeling some line. Whew. Now here's the other game you play with drag. If your drag's too tight, you end up, you know, losing what you have. It'll end up breaking the line if you're using lighter line like I am. You know, I'm using 15 pound braid on this rod and a 20 pound test, you know, fluorocarbon. This is definitely a bigger fish, man. If I had to venture, I guess if it's one fish, it's definitely a keeper. I mean, it's just peeling, peeling, and peeling. And I tightened my drag earlier because it was pretty loose early. But I mean, I have. I might honestly have to pull the anchor and chase this thing because it's just taking line. I can't even. Whew. Yeah, I'm, I might have to pull the anchor and chase this guy because I'm going to be on my back in very soon. I just want to see it. I really don't even care if I get it in the boat. I just want to know if it's one nicer sized fish or one nicer fish or two small fish. This thing is not tired, that's for sure. He's been running for about three minutes straight. I'll pump up every once in a while to try and gain on him. But... Oh, man. Now we're starting to get a little bit on him. But he's still a good distance out there. I think he's pretty tired now. Oh, man. 
Whew. It's like a workout, man. No gyms. Just come out here and crank on some stripers. Not too far. Just heard him at the surface. Yeah, he's probably 20 yards away. Oh, now he's starting to run again. Yep, he got a second wind. I really want to know what this is. Oh. Yep, there goes the second wind. Nothing I can really do right now other than sit and hold back. Hope you don't run me into the debris. All that line we gained is now back. Oh man. Now, if we do land this fish, I'm going to make. Literally the battery just died as I got it to the boat and go figure, it's a big stingray. Oh, let me see if I can't shine the light on him and show you guys. Big old ray. Easily, I don't know, maybe 40 pound ray. Cow nose ray. Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna have to put my light down try and I'm gonna tr it's hooked in the mouth if you could believe that but let me uh, see if I can't free it whoa yeah he's hooked yeah, he's hooked right in the side of the chin let me see if I can't get it with it Pliers. Got it. And just so you know, I did get the hook back. <laughs> it's just a little bent. Look at that. I don't know if you could see that. 
Jeez Louise. Tell you what, man, <laughs> these jigs definitely hold up. But, yeah, that's a little uh, depressing, but you know what? It gave us a good fight. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video um, and learned something new. As always, uh, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. And if you're not a subscriber to the page, please join the page. Click subscribe down below. I'll see you guys soon.